Tia Curtis and I am sewing masks during this global pandemic. Have you been making masks? <sighs> so I was sewing masks on my domestic sewing machine, on my little Bernina. Sewing, sewing, sewing like a little cursed princess in a fairy tale, sewing. And one of my friends who I quote for was like, Tia, why aren't you using your long arm to make masks? And I was like, why am I not? That's crazy, I totally should. So I trotted upstairs to my trusty gamble and I designed a pattern to quilt out with CS7 software. My friend Christina Perigo digitized it so it can sew with any computerized quilting system that you have. You can download that on my website. So I wanted to show you how to load up your fabric. It's a little bit different than loading a quilt, obviously. And it's super easy. I'm going to show you now. So loading your fabric to sew masks is different than loading your fabric to load up a quilt. You're going to load the back of the mask face up front of the mask face down. Now I've used fabric with prints on it so you could clearly see that this part is face up, this part is face down. You can use as many layers of fabric as you want. Just for this sample I'm using two layers of fabric. This is quilting fabric. I have washed this fabric. I've dried it so all the shrinking is already done. Now, what you're gonna need to do next is you're gonna need to baste around the perimeter of your piece. And now we're gonna baste around our fabric. And this doesn't have to be anything perfect. We're just anchoring the fabric together. Notice that my pieces of fabric are the same size. I didn't use a much larger back. The back and the front are the same. All right, so that's done. Let me show you how to set up the digital pattern, okay? So the pattern I designed is based off the Turban Project face mask. You can find it on the Deaconess website. Um, it's a so when it stitches out, it's gonna stitch out at five and a half inches tall by nine inches wide. So keep that in mind, the, the pattern has to quilt out to scale. You don't want it to squeeze in and fit on your quilt like you would with like an edge to edge design. So for Creative Studios, which is the Statler Stitcher digital uh, computer system, I'm gonna be using repeat pattern. I have more control of exactly the size of the pattern as it's going to quilt out. So I've clicked out a boundary. Pattern. I'm choosing my medical mask pattern. Again, you can find this on my website. And it comes in all the different formats. If you've got Anova or Handy Quilt or whatever you want, whatever you need. So choose repeat pattern. It's going to ask where it goes. I'm going to say OK. So there's my pattern, I'm gonna grab it. So my, my piece of fabric, it's just a width of, of fabric by about a yard. So a width of fabric is about 42 inches. My pattern is nine inches wide. So I know that I can get four repeats to scale. Once again, I'm using repeat pattern to quilt out this design. After you've set up, your four passes, you know, your four pieces of mass to sew out. You can use rubber stamp, that's like a copying function, to put in the next two rows. Because you want to get, you know, as many masks made as possible so you have, you know, good use of your time. So right now, this design is ready to quilt out. So again, you layer your fabric face to face on your long arm, use repeat pattern so the mask pattern will print to scale. You don't want to have teeny tiny masks that aren't usable or great big ones that are ridiculous. You want the correct size. And then you use rubber stamp to repeat the design 
for like three different passes, okay? So we've got it all set up, it's ready to go. Keep in mind as you're setting up seam allowance. So each of these masks, after it's quilted out, you'll have to cut them out, flip them inside out, and then attach whatever strings or elastic that you're gonna use. Um, so that's one reason why I don't use edge to edge, because that bumps them all up on top of each other with no seam allowance. So I like the rubber stamp feature because I can put in my first row exactly, and then I just copy it and place them so there's about three quarters of an inch between each row. So that's the seam allowance to cut them to get it ready. It'll make more sense in just a minute. So now it's ready to stitch. Let's see what happens. So all my masks have finished stitching out. In about 20 minutes, I've got 24 masks. It's not a bad gig, huh? So if you have a long arm, you can quilt out a bunch of these mask pieces for other groups that are doing the finishing work. That's what I've been doing in my area, and that's a pretty cool network. If you don't, and you're making the masks all yourself, that's fine too. Um, I've made this pattern so there are jump stitches. There are these unsewn spots in each of the four corners of the mask and that's to feed in either a piece of elastic or the ties depending on what you have. Let me show you on some pieces that have already been cut out. So if you're doing the finishing work yourself First, you'll need to cut out each mask piece. You know, make sure that there's a quarter inch seam allowance around your seam lines. Then you, my dogs are working. Then you turn each mask inside out. And you'll have this. Each corner has a little tiny open spot. And that's where you're gonna either add your ties, 22 inch ties, or seven inch elastic. And it's a little bit fiddly. Tweezers will help. Oh, forgot, we gotta pleat these suckers. So to pleat them, they need three pleats. And it doesn't need to be super specific, I don't think. You just fold once, you press, You fold twice, and you fold one more time. So you want three pleats, pin the pleats as you go, just like here. So I've pleated and I've pinned each of my pleats. Now we've got to feed in our elastic. This one I've already started. And the elastic can be kind of a pain to put in, so I've used tweezers. So use your pointy end of your tweezer, to get that elastic in enough so that your seam allowance will catch it. So it needs to go in about a half inch. And then when you're sewing, you just top stitch all the way around the mask and back stitch when you get to the elastic corners. And that's it. Then you have a very functional, very comfortable, mask to wear to keep you and your loved ones safe from COVID-19. Remember these have to be washed after every use. Um, so use fabric that is washable for many, 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 many times. All right. In conclusion, you can make masks with your gamma long arm or whatever long arm you have. The free pattern is available at my website, tiacurtisquilts.com. 
Just download it in whichever format your machine uses and stitch out masks. I know in the next couple weeks we're going to need a whole bunch of masks and this is what we've been training for. This is our moment. <laughs> so stitch out those masks, y'all. I want to thank Christine Perigo for digitizing my pattern to make it available in all the formats. So thank you, Christine, and stitch on. Thank you.